Hey, listeners, welcome to the very first of the Thinking It Through Wins and Wisdom episodes. Today, my special guest is Michelle Kopp, and she is joining me from Kansas City, Missouri. I'm going to let Michelle introduce herself, and then we will talk a little bit about what she does, and then we'll jump into her question, and I will share my thoughts, my wisdom on her specific question. And if you are all interested in applying to be a Thinking It Through Wins and Wisdom guest, then the link will be in the show notes, but it is very simple. It's just bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash thinking, thinking it through. So you can go there and apply for your feature as well. All right. Without further ado, Michelle Kopp, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Um, yes. So, yeah. A little bit about myself. I'm just, um, I'm a mom. I'm a business intelligence analyst by day and a financial coach um, by night and uh, kind of want to do that as my, my main business. So That's awesome. So you want to take this side gig to a full-time career. Yep. Yes. Exactly. And I love that because of the opportunity for time freedom, uh, financial freedom, all of those good things, especially when you have a young family. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So tell us about the wins that you get for your clients. Yeah. So um, as a financial coach, I basically help my clients take control of their money so that they can live more and worry less. A lot of my clients, they never really learned how to manage their money. And so they come in a way by working with me, they get a, a full fledged new way to manage their money, a system, and um, they have the ability to have tools to be able to change behaviors, spending habits, um, and then they are able to figure out what their goals are and actually make a plan to reach them. So that's kind of what I do with my clients. So the end, I'm guessing the end um, outcome, final outcome is they have more financial stability for the long term. Exactly. Yep. Awesome. Okay. So tell the listeners what your question was for me. Yeah. So um, I, I've been told you can't ever share too much. Um, but I've struggled with knowing what to share, like in my newsletter or social media, like the content to provide value and education and show that I'm an expert, but also like not giving my program away, basically, of what I teach my clients. So I've given like pieces here and there, but I never know exactly where do I draw the line or should I be giving more and providing more value? Mm. I love this question so much because it's one that so many people have including myself at times. And so I'm going to, I made a list of several thoughts that I'm going to share with you that will hopefully get you started on the right step, doing, creating and doing um, your content creation with more ease, more simplicity, but also more consistently so that people can really get to know you, love you and trust you. Um, a couple of things. One thing is that people need to hear things now between 14 and 21 times in order for them to actually recognize it, for it to resonate with them, for them to remember it and then implement it, to even take action on that thing. So you can never say something too many times. So even if you feel like you're giving something away, a lot of times people don't catch it. The So I just wanted to put that out there at first. The other thing is that ideal clients may know what they want, but they don't necessarily know what they need. And so the more deeply you get to know your soulmate client, every single thing about them and what their pain points are. And when I say everything about them, okay, in your case, because your financial demographics do matter because you do need to know what are their spending habits and are they, you know, shopping at Louis Vuitton or are they shopping at Walmart? You do need to know these things, but the key in knowing them is what exactly they see they want, but don't recognize they need. So what are their pain points? How can you identify those pain points? So if you think about what is it that they're thinking when they're making breakfast in the morning, doing dishes, folding laundry, or journaling before bed at night? What is it that they want more of? Is it more money? Is it more time? If they're business owners and they don't know how to man manage money, then that is a huge stress factor for them, right? If they're a mom and they are trying to save money for their kid's college, but they have all these other expenses they don't know how to manage, that's going to cause more stress, take away more time. So there's a lot of facets, facets there, no matter who your ideal client is. Um, are they unorganized? Because if they're unorganized, that's going to cause them to feel 
overwhelmed. And this may be where you come in and your system comes into play. Are they in a state of fear so that they don't look at their numbers and therefore they don't have a pulse on them, which is obviously going to create more stress if they don't have a, a pulse on what those numbers are. No, no pulse correlates to no idea what or how they need to take action in order to create more demand in their business or to cut back in their personal life. So all of these become content ideas that you can address and state how, you know, hiring a financial ad advisor helps or a financial coach helps to help them resolve some of those stresses or reduce some of those stresses. Um, you aren't giving everything away, but you're providing value and letting them know that you understand, you see them, you see where they're at today, and you understand the pain and the stress and the overwhelm that they're experiencing. The more you share things like that, the more um, you're, they're going to see you as someone who cares about them. They're going to see you and your journey as an opportunity to have you come in now and because of your expertise, hold their hand and help them and guide them to their next steps. You can provide value without giving them every solution. And sometimes it's just the content, um, you know, that helps them recognize you as the expert and then dropping solutions periodically that they find most helpful. Maybe something is as simple as a review of, um, you know, like a, a financial spreadsheet or what numbers to keep track of or um, how to set aside time each month to look at their numbers. What numbers do they need to look at? How do they categorize their numbers from their spending or their expenses or how often they're going out to dinner? You know, maybe it is that, oh, you're, you want to save money, but you don't realize that the average cost of going out to dinner for a family of four is X, Y, Z. So there's little things like that that you can come up with that you're probably very familiar with. You already have in your mind or your data bank of, of knowledge that you can start sharing with them. And then when you do drop those quick little suggestions for solutions, they're going to think, Michelle told me to do this, but I need her to do it for me. They may do it for a couple of months, and then they're going to be like, I don't have time for this. I don't want to do this. I need a system that works without me having to try to create it myself. So when you think of that, um, you're giving them value by number one, sharing your expertise and letting them know that you're out there to support them and help them. You're giving them value because now they're going to have small tips or big tips that are going to help them solve a problem, but they may not take the initiative to do it themselves, but you're going to be front of mind because you are the one that has presented these options for the solution, right? And then the other thing is, um, when you're creating content, if you can think of things like what three key things does every business owner need to know to save time and ensure their numbers are on track? Or what does every busy mom need to know to keep her numbers on track? And, it's, you know, even if you're talking about financial security, financial long-term saving money, it's little things like, do people still clip coupons? Um, you know, and it depends on the depth of the level that you're working with your clients? Are you working with million dollar bank accounts? Are you working with, you know, $50,000 bank accounts? Like what, what level of income is going to also to help you determine specifically what that content you create is, but you can come up with a lot of ideas without giving away your entire system. Okay. Yeah. That's super helpful. That's what, there's a lot of ideas in there. Okay. <laughs> you know, good. My brain is spinning. So that's oh, good. 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 I love that. I love that you found those ideas helpful. Do you um, want to share with the listeners how they can find you, connect with you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, you can go to my website at hopecoachkc.com and there's a button throughout the area um, on my website where it says schedule a free call where we just jump on a call for 20 minutes and I can see if I can help you and your money challenges. And then we go from there. So that's how you can get a hold of me. I'm also on social media. Um, Michelle underscore hope financial uh, is my handle for Instagram. 
and I'm also on Facebook. Awesome. Michelle, thanks so much for being our first guest in the Thinking It Through Wins and Wisdom episodes and conversations. I'm so glad that you put yourself out there to ask these questions. And I do hope that this really helped you. And if you have any questions, you can always follow up with me. All right, listeners, that's a wrap for the very first Thinking It Through Wins and Wisdom episode. And I do encourage you to apply. Hopefully you see how how much information and help these little tiny tidbits of episodes uh, can be. And if you're interested, you know where to apply in the show notes at the link bit.ly forward slash thinking it through. All right. Thanks everybody. Have a great Thursday and we will be back with another episode tomorrow.